Hello again, um, this is how to make a pulley driven electric car or electric racer. Um, we're going to be using the standard uh, DC motor that we use in primary schools. Um, and as you probably know, the, the main problem with these is that they, they spin really, really fast, about three and a half thousand times per minute. So if we connect the motor to uh, the uh, driven axle directly, then the driven axle will spin round at that speed and um, when you put the uh, electric car down on the floor it probably won't move at all. Um, that's because there isn't, it, the axle is not turning with enough force. So we need to um, reduce the speed from the uh, motor to the driven axle and by doing that we increase the force. Um, there are various ways of doing that. Uh, the way we're going to use with this uh, design is to use pulleys. We're going to put the smallest possible pulley, this is the P100 pulley, uh, on the motor and we're going to link it to um, a larger pulley which is going to be on the drive axle with a rubber band. First thing we need to do is to make the uh, chassis the base of the car, which is clear the decks of it. Uh, I'm going to use a piece of um, four millimeter Corix for the strength. Uh, you could uh, you could use card. And um, this design has got a, a rather clever uh, feature, where um, it will when it when it bumps into a wall, it will automatically turn itself off. So what we're going to do, we're going to um, put some wood around the um, edges of the corex and I'm going to use a, a glue gun to do that. This is a uh, low melt glue gun, the type that we mainly use in primary schools. Once you squeeze the trigger and get the glue out you've got about five seconds to get the two things together. And the last piece. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the uh, bearings for the axles to run in. And we're going to use uh, jumbo straws for this. So we turn it over and we're going to put the uh, jumbo straws across the base. We could glue them on. Um, actually Sellotape works really well with Corex. I've got some some of these that I've made uh, ten years ago, and the, the sellotape is still is still is still working. Sticky tape sticks really well to Corex. And another piece there. And a fourth piece there. Try not to squash the straw when you put the sellotape on because an axle is going to run through it. So try and loop the, the sticky tape around. Um, next I'm going to trim these straws back to leave a few millimetres sticking out. Whenever I'm using straws as bearings, I always do this, uh, leave a little bit sticking out um, to stop the wheel from uh, rubbing on the side. We're always trying to uh, reduce the friction. Okay, next thing we're going to do is to um, assemble the, the undriven axle, the axle that's not connected to the motor. I've got some 4mm dowel here and um, I could use lots of different wheels. These are um, wooden wheels and I'm just going to tap them in with a hammer. It's always nice when things fit together without gluing. doesn't matter which end you put it. Turn it over and tap the other wheel on. Tap them together. I think that can go down a bit more. Uh, now that's um, too much of a gap there. Uh, what we really need is a gap between uh, two tables. Uh, let me see what, have I, what can I use. How about the gap between these pliers here and that will allow me to tap the axle down there we go and we'll tap 
tap down the other side. Don't scrunch the wheels together, leave a little gap so that they'll spin really easily. So make sure that you leave um, a little gap, make sure you don't hammer them up against the straw. I'm just going to take a shortcut here and use some car cutting scissors to cut off that excess axle. Okay, now we're going to um, assemble the uh, driven axle. Uh, once again, we tap a piece of 4mm dowel into a wheel. Slide it through the um, straw. But this time, before we put the other wheel on, we're going to put on the uh, pulley. This is a wooden pulley. Uh, make sure that the, the, you use the largest pulley you can, but obviously it, it can't be bigger than the um, wheel. So we tap that on first. Let's see if I can push it on. No, so we need to make a, a gap again. We'll use the pliers. Go. We just need a slightly bigger gap, so we'll use make another little gap here. You could use the gap between two tables or two blocks of wood. Keep tapping, but always make sure there is a small gap to make sure the whole thing spins really well. And now I can put the um, the last wheel on. Tap that on. And again, we'll use uh, the pliers to create a, a gap and tap that down so that the uh, wheel is um, a, a, alongside the uh, pulley. Okay, um, let's start to build the circuit now. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is to glue another piece of corex across there to create a, a platform to mount the batteries on and the motor. So we just put some glue on the ends of the pulley, on the, on the ends of the corex, I beg your pardon. There we go. And we're now going to fix the motor in place. You can buy uh, plastic motor, motor mounts, they're clips that you can clip the motor in. Um, I'm just going to glue it in place. But um, before I do, uh, we're going to connect these two pulleys together with uh, an elastic band. And we need to make sure that the band is um, not too tight and not too loose. Uh, we could use a number 14 elastic band or a number 18 elastic band. Um, let's see, let's try it out first of all. Let's put the number 18 band on and let's see how the uh, the motor works out. Um, no, I don't think that's going to work. I think we're going to have to use the number 14 band. We don't want it to be too tight otherwise that would be too much for the motor to turn. Yes, I think the number 14 is going to work here. We'll stretch it over there, and I think if I put it um, directly above there, that doesn't feel too tight. That feels a bit too tight. Um, that feels just about right. And try and get it so that the uh, pulleys um, align. If they're offset, the, the rubber band tends to fly off. So I think that's the right position for the elastic band. So I'm just going to put um, quite a big blob of glue here. and glue the motor down and make sure that the pulleys line up and just hold it for a few seconds just to make sure that you've got um, a really good connection there we are that looks good okay um, we could use um, AA batteries and a AA holder um, for this design um, I like to use the next size up these are um, C size batteries so I've got a double C battery holder so it will be a 3 volt circuit 
we fit on a connector and I'm going to glue that down onto that platform. There we go. Okay, so we're now going to start to build the circuit. Um, I don't really mind which direction this goes in. Um, I tend to prefer it going that way. So let's do a, a little bit of exp let's do an experiment to find out which way it's going to go first of all. Okay, okay, that's so. Let's t that's the wrong way. So let's swap it over and twist the wires together like this. Ah, oh, yep, and now that's that's going the right way. So once you've worked out which, which way you want it to go, join two of the wires together permanently. It doesn't matter which two. So I think I'm going to join these two together. There we are. Um, obviously if I had more time I would cut those shorter and tidy them up. You can at the very least tuck them underneath the platform there and perhaps stick them down with some sticky tape. Now, um, to control this electric uh, car we could obviously use a switch. Uh, we could make a switch out of uh, paper fasteners and uh, paper clips or we could use a bolt switch. But for this design I'm going to make a switch using cooking foil. So, uh, cut two pieces of foil big enough to stretch across and I'm going to fix them in place with two paper fasteners. I'm just going to push two holes through to make it a bit easier to push the paper fasteners through. Push one paper fastener through and bend the legs over and before I put the other one through, I'm going to get one of the uh, two wires that are left, it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to use the one from the motor, put it between the legs of the paper fastener, bend it over, and then push it down through the foil and bend the legs over. And we do the same with another strip but we leave a little gap between them. So get another strip, I'm going to put it about there. You can glue the strips down, I don't think I'm going to worry about that. Again make some holes with a screwdriver and another hole here. Push one paper fastener in And finally make the last connection. Now these, these battery wires are made of lots of uh, strands so tie, tidy them up by twisting them together between the legs of the uh, paper fastener. Twist it round and push that one through and bend the legs over. And that is the um, completed Fully driven electric car. Um, I'd probably get some sellotape and tidy up these wires and to make it operate you put um, any uh, object made of metal um, across that gap um, and that will complete the circuit and make it go and what will happen is that when it crashes into something the coin slides off and it will automatically stop. So when you put a, a coin across there, that will make it go, and when it stops, when it crashes, the coin will slide off. So I hope you enjoy making your uh, pulley-driven electric car.